My name is Mitch Tavera, and I have the distinct pleasure of being the master of ceremony for today's event. This is the 41st annual Medal of Valor ceremony, and on behalf of the South Bay Police and Fire Memorial Foundation and the South Bay Medal of Valor Committee, welcome to today's luncheon, and thank you for your attendance. As usual, we have a great-looking audience, with a few notable exceptions. Where's Bob Fager? Oh, there he is. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, this is the first time the Medal of Valor ceremony, or the Medal of Valor ceremony, is being hosted by the South Bay Police and Medal South Bay Memorial Foundation. The previous 40 luncheons had been planned and hosted by the South Bay Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to take this time to thank all the chambers for the legacy of efforts. Thank you. We'd also wish to thank the Medal of Valor Committee members for their contribution in producing that, this event. Sherry Kramer from Continental Development Corporation. Hold on, please. And, and really don't cheer here at all. Uh, Margie Randall from the El Segundo Police Department. Jill Mendoza from the Hatton Beach Police Department. Donna Dupron from the Torrance Chamber of Commerce. and Marner Smeltzer from the Donald Beach Chamber of Commerce. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you, all of you. Please stand and be recognized. Jill, come on up. Margie in the back. Terry, thank you. Donna, please. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Torrance Marriott Hotel, who continues to be a wonderful host. Thank you again for this beautiful venue. Thank you very much. and to the Torrance Community Cable for being here today and recording the event. Thank you. What a pleasure it is to see so many friends and colleagues and familiar faces in the audience. Sharing this wonderful event with this year's awardees is commendable. In the lobby outside the main ballroom, you may have seen the dozen of proclamations from various government officials honoring today's recipients. This is a reminder to those recipients to please pick them up as you leave or they'll end up in my office, which means they'll be shredded. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, for some of the attendees, when you're done, the recipients, Torrance Community Cable would like to do interviews with you afterwards. So please take care of that. I'd like to take this time to introduce the head table. Please hold your applause until all the officials have been announced. From the city of El Segundo, Mayor, Mayor Suzanne Fuentes, Fire Chief Kevin Smith, and me. <laughs> From the city of Gardena, Mayor Pro Tem Terry Teriachi, and Police Chief Ed Medrano. Wait a minute. <laughs> From the city of Hawthorne, there you go, Mayor Chris Brown and Police Chief Robert Fager. From the city of Hermosa Beach, Mayor Peter Tucker, Police Chief Sharon Papa, and Fire Chief, James, uh, Fire Chief David Lancer. From the city of Inglewood, Mayor Jim Butts and Police Chief Mark Franerata. From the city of Manhattan Beach, Mayor Wayne Powell, Police Chief Eve Irvine, and Acting Battalion Chief Derek Edmonds. From the City of Palos Verdes Estates, Mayor James Goodhart and Police Chief Jeff Kepley. From the City of Redondo Beach, Mayor Steve Espel, Police Chief John New, that's a new one for him, and Fire Chief Robert Metzner. And finally, from the uh, City of Torrance, Mayor Pat Fury, Police Chief Mark Masuda, and Fire Chief William Rakowski. Please just give them all a round of applause. Also seated at the head table is our guest presenter for the 11th straight year, the great one, the voice of Los Angeles, Glenn Walker of KTLA Channel 5 News. I'd also like to acknowledge the many elected officials and dignitaries who are attending today's ceremony. Again, please hold your applause until they're all introduced. From the city of El Segundo, Mayor Pro Tem Carl Jacobson and Councilman Dave Atkinson. From the city of Gardena, Councilwoman Tasha Serda, Councilman Dave Medina, Treasurer Ingrid Sukiyami, and Clerk Mina Semensa. From the city of Hawthorne, Mayor Pro Tem Olivia Valentine, Councilwoman Angie Reyes English, and Treasurer Dave Patterson. From the city of Hermosa Beach, Councilman Mike DiVirigilio, Councilwoman Carolyn Petty, and Councilman 
Haney Fangary. Thank you. City of Inglewood, Councilman George Dotson and Councilman Alex Padilla. And City of Manhattan Beach, Councilmember David Lesser and Councilmember Tony D. Errico. The City of Torrance, Councilwoman Heidi Ashcroft, Councilman Mike Griffins, Councilman Jeff Rizzo, and Councilman Kurt Weedman. From the West Basin Water District, Mr. Scott Houston. From the Office of Congressman Ted Liu, David Legger. From the Office of Congresswoman Maxine Waters, Mr. Sean Fleming. From the Office of Senator Ben Allen, Lauren Pfizer Mains. From the Office of Senator Isidore Hall, Avilino Valencia. From the Office of Assemblyman David Hadley, Mr. Tom Brewer. From the Office of Assemblywoman Autumn Burke, Mr. Robert Pullen Miles. From Supervisor Don Canabi's office, the former mayor of Manhattan Beach, the one, the only, Steve Napolitano. <laughs> and from Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, Thomas's office, Mr. Derek Johnson. And I believe he's here today, and I was told I had to say this, the greatest city manager in the South Bay from the city of El Segundo, Mr. Greg Carpenter. Let's all give him a round of applause. The opening ceremony will consist of four parts. The presentation of colors will be done by the color guard from the El Segundo Police Department. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by former Medal of Valor and Distinguished Service recipient, Lieutenant Ray Garcia of the El Segundo Police Department. The national anthem will be sung by Latrice McLaughlin of Conecuh Bank and Chopin and retired Manhattan Beach Fire Department Battalion Chief Ken Chuck will give the invocation. Upon completion of our opening ceremony, we will enjoy lunch. Please stand, all of you. Remain standing until the opening ceremonies are complete. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Lieutenant Garcia. Post the colors. Please place your hands over your hearts and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the National Anthem. Yeah. 
star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Why don't you all take a seat, to take a load off. So I've been retired about six months, and as such, I'm getting to do a lot more fun things. So last night, my wife and I were at the Hollywood Bowl watching uh, Neil Diamond. And in his, uh, at the end of his concert, in his encore, uh, he sang a song called Coming to America. And I was just reminded what a great country we live in. Uh, and it's a great country because of the people, the types of people we're going to recognize today. So would you please join me now according to your faith traditions. Heavenly Father, today is a special day, a time of recognition of hard work and risks taken. So we give thanks that you give, gave these local heroes the courage and strength to perform their duties. To all of those who will step up and be recognized today, I ask that you give a sense of pride in their accomplishment. Bless their families who support, who support them, but worry each day as they serve. But also remind them in each of their lives that you are interested in their safety and that they are never alone while on shift. Your strength, their training and commitment enabled them to protect others and your providence kept them safe. As we approach Memorial Day, we also ask for protection for those who are serving in the armed forces today. Protect them as they fight evil and provide relief to those in need. Be with us now as we enjoy the fellowship around these tables and we ask your blessing on the food we will eat. And if I may, this is my prayer for each of you. I ask the Lord to bless and keep you and be gracious to you, to turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may the blessings of God be among you and remain with you always. In his holy name, amen. Thank you, Ken, and for all the uh, participants in our opening ceremonies. Please sit down and enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much. We also have several corporation sponsors that have made additional financial contributions. They are Advanced Electronics, the Aerospace Corporation, American Honda, Chevron USA, Continental Development Corporation, The Daily Breeze, Exxon Mobil Corporation, Connecticut Federal Credit Union, Martin Chevrolet, Northrop Grumman, yeah. Skechers, Sunrider International, and UCLA Health. Let's please give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank the many table buyers who supported this year's event. Our volunteers who came out today are Amanda O'Donnell, Joanne Ramirez, Lori Risk, Gabriella Perlusi, Madeline Leewald, Sandra McJanet, Vanessa Ryan, John Bushman, Greg McMullen, Dick Miller, Oscar Serrano, Patricia Donaldson, and Molly Reichel. Would you please stand and be recognized? For all the volunteers, please. Come on, get up. Thank you. Thank you. Your financial contributions and your work today allow us, the Medal of Valor Committee, to honor today's recipients. In addition, the Aerospace Corporation was responsible for the design and printing of all of our material, including the program today. Today we are recognizing nine recipients, all heroes in their own right, for the Medal of Valor, the Distinguished Service Award, and the new Life Saving Award. The Life Saving Award is awarded to firefighter police officers assigned to the South Bay Mutual Aid Pact Departments. There's nine independent police departments and I believe five fire departments. 
The purpose is to provide recognition for performing a distinct and successful life-saving act upon another human being under non-standard circumstances between January through December 31st, 2014. The Distinguished Service Award is awarded to firefighters or police officers. The award is made to individuals to recognize efforts that exemplify the finest standards of the police and fire departments, yet do not merit the Medal of Valor, again during the calendar year 2014. And finally, the most prestigious of them, the Medal of Valor, is awarded to firefighters or police officers assigned, again, to one of the South Bay cities, who distinguish themselves for extraordinary valor above and beyond the call of duty. These public safety officers must have exhibited extraordinary courage, heroism, and other meritorious action at extreme personal risk. And the act was deemed above and beyond the call of duty. The Medal of Valor Committee receives nominations by the, res by the respective South Bay Police and Fire Chiefs. The nominations are reviewed by a panel of South Bay Chiefs to ensure they meet the highest standards established for each award. Action items associated with the awards include requesting proclamations, communicating with the chiefs, city officials, recipients, <clears throat> elected officials, the ordering of medals, <laughs> plaques, and numerous other details. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of two people who worked tirelessly to make this event a success. Number one is my executive assistant, Margie Randall, and number two, and most importantly, and that's what she told me, most importantly, from Continental Development Corporation, Community Affairs Director, Sherry Kramer. Let's give them a palm <laughs> The South Bay Police and Fire Memorial Foundation is an organization dedicated to providing financial support for families of fallen or disabled police or fire personnel from the nine South Bay cities who have their own independent police and fire departments. The foundation was founded in June of 1994 and is comprised of police and fire representatives and a core of citizen and business community volunteers. No public funds are used to provide the financial support. The foundation uses fundraising events to obtain the necessary aid. Can I have all the foundation board members and attendants please stand up and be recognized? Please. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. If you like, please refer uh, to the brochure to learn more about our organization. And now I'm pleased to present our guest speaker tonight, Mr. Glenn Walker who anchors KTLA's 1 and 3 p.m., who also does the sports morning report, who does the money sports report, and is reporter for KTLA's Channel 5 News at 10 p.m. He joined KTLA in May of 2010 from KCBS-TV and KCAL-TV, where he anchored the weekend news on both stations. Glenn's broadcasting career began when he attended Florida State University. After an internship at Tallahassee ABC affiliate, he worked as a production assistant at Florida Public Broadcasting for Today in the Legislature, where he operated a TV camera in the galleries for the Florida Senate and House of Representatives. After graduation, Glenn became the weekend sports anchor at the same station in Tallahassee where he interned. He also worked at a liquor store where I understand he still works today. <laughs> Maybe so. From there he went to Panama City, Florida, where he was a sports anchor as well as a photographer, editor, and writer. After a sh short stint with the ABC affiliate in Macon, Georgia, Glenn was off to Buffalo, New York, WIVB-TV, where he traveled with the NFL Buffalo Bills and the NHL Buffalo Sabres. That must have been one cold event. <laughs> After six years in Buffalo, Glenn headed out west to sunny Southern California to work for Prime Ticket Network. Along with hosting the award-winning Press Box Nightly Sports Show, he also hosted the LA Raiders um, Get Out of Jail Free Magazine and College Football Today. In 1990, while working at the Pac-10 Sideline Reporters, he barely avoided being trampled by Traveler, the Trojan horse of the Coliseum. At WNBC-TV in New York City, Glenn started as the weekend sports anchor in September 1995, where he made a successful transition to the news. 
serving as co-host on the number one rated Saturday to Sunday Today in New York City. He later was promoted to the position of weekend news anchor on WNBC TV. Glenn co-anchored WNBC TV live breaking news coverage on September 11, 2001, for which WNBC TV won several awards. Glenn came back home to Southern California in September 2002. Glenn has a very distinguished career, has won numerous awards throughout his career, including several Los Angeles Emmys and New York Emmy. He has received many UPI National and AP New York awards, and for an unprecedented three years in a row, from 93 to 95, excuse me, he was part of the best news anchor team as named by the Southern California Sports Broadcasters Association. He has a lovely wife, Jody, who I understand has vision issues and four beautiful children. <laughs> it says, I was reading it. While he roots for his FSU Seminoles, the rest of his family roots for the USC Trojans. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the voice of Southern California News, Mr. Glenn Walker. Thank you very much, I think. Uh, speaking of liquor stores, I think it's the first time I've ever been in the same room with uh, Mayor Steve Askell and Mayor Peter Tucker, and there's no alcohol. <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> oh, Mayor Askell says, how do you know? <laughs> You're not driving home, are you? No. Okay. Okay, if, uh, if you've been with us the last couple years to try something new, because I anchored the 1 o'clock news, I should be on TV uh, in three minutes, but I'm not gonna be because I'm here with you folks, but we managed to pull off doing a live shot from this event the last couple of years, so we're gonna try to do the same thing. If we don't get through all the awards, then we will stop, and we'll do uh, the live shot uh, with our Medal of Valor winner, and then we'll continue the program. But uh, So we have six presentations. We might actually get through this, but if not, uh, we'll, like I say, we'll stop and start and see how it goes. Anyway, again, uh, it is an honor to be with you again for the 11th consecutive year. Uh, wouldn't wanna miss it. and. Um, I hope I'm here for the next 11 years and beyond that. Right now I would ask that uh, Gardena police officers David Montavon and police officer Jesus Ugaldi please come up to the front. Can't wait to read what they did. <laughs> December 14, 2014, South Bay Regional Communications Consortium broadcasted a call of an infant choking at 13,600 South Spinning Avenue, Gardena. Police officer David Montavon acknowledged the call and responded code three. Officers Jesus Agalde and his partner, Officer Carlos Fernandez, also responded. Officer Montavon ran into the residence, the hysterical mother of a seven-week-old Kai Hill handed her over to him. At this time, the baby was unresponsive, not breathing, her eyes were rolled back in her head, and her body was limp. Officer Montavon immediately turned the baby face down and started back blows on her attempting to dislodge whatever was keeping her from breathing. A few seconds later, Gardena police officers Ugaldi and Fernandez arrived. Upon their arrival, Officer Ugaldi scanned the room and picked up a suction bulb syringe. The baby was then turned into a position where Officer Ugaldi could use the suction bulb on the infant. The suction bulb was able to remove excessive mucus and milk that was blocking the baby's airway. The baby was almost immediately able to start breathing. The breasts at this time were shallow but allowed enough air for the baby to whimper. Officer Ugaldi continued to use the suction bulb on the baby and was able to clear her airway enough to bring her breathing to normal. Officers continued to monitor the baby until LA County Fire arrived approximately four minutes later. The baby was placed under the care of the LA County Fire paramedics who transported her to the hospital. Officers David Montavon and Jesus Ugaldi are committed for excellent teamwork and going above and beyond the call of duty to perform actions which ultimately saved the life of this helpless young child. These officers are a credit to the Gardena Police Department and the community they serve. Presenting the life-saving awards to both Officer Montavon and Jesus Agalti, Police Chief Ed Madrano.
Would police officer Michael Murray from the Hawthorne Police Department please come forward? <laughs> officer Michael Murray has been a police officer for the city of Hawthorne for seven years. In the spring of 2013, Officer Kemp attended the California Institute of Emergency Medical Technicians EMT course hosted at the Hawthorne Police Department. He graduated and was certified as emergency medical technician as well as a tactical medical instructor for the Hawthorne SWAT team. On Thursday, December 18, 2014, Officer Michael Murray responded to a radio call of a three-week-old baby barely breathing and non-responsive. The mother advised dispatch that the child was gasping for air once every two minutes and was blue around the mouth. Officer Murray arrived on scene within two minutes, grabbing the stat pack medical bag kept in every Hawthorne police vehicle and ran to the residence. Upon locating the child in a bedroom, Officer Murray conducted a rapid assessment and noted that the baby was now blue and completely non-responsive. Recognizing dire respiratory distress, Officer Murray took out a pediatric bag valve mask and began providing life-saving breaths for the child. Officer Murray continued with this respiratory measure until fire personnel arrived a short time later. Paramedics arrived, their corresponding treatment as they prepared for immediate transport to an area trauma center. As aid continued and the baby ready for transport, breathing and a pulse were regained. The child was ultimately treated and made a full recovery. Without a doubt, Officer Murray's quick response, medical assessment, and prompt allocation of life-saving medical interventions played the key role in the child's survival. His life-saving action is in keeping with the finest service traditions of our community by both himself and the Hawthorne Police Department. Presenting the life-saving award to Officer Murray is Police Chief Bob Fager. Would author and police officer Sean Kemp please come forward? <laughs> officer Sean Kemp has been a police officer with the city of Hawthorne for five years. In the spring of 2013, Officer Kemp attended the California Institute of Medical Emergency Medical Technicians EMT course hosted at the Hawthorne Police Department. He graduated and was certified as emergency medical technician as well as a tactical medical instructor for the Hawthorne SWAT team. On Saturday, April 5th, 2014, Officer Kemp responded to a radio call of a baby not breathing at 3637 West 139th Street, apartment 13. The dispatcher advised responding officers that a male subject was on the phone screaming hysterically about his daughter. Officer Kemp was the first to arrive on scene and was met by the father who advised him that his daughter was upstairs and non-responsive. Officer Kemp ran upstairs and observed a baby girl lying on the floor. He quickly conducted an assessment of the infant and found the child was not breathing and did not have a pulse. Officer Kemp immediately began infant CPR. Officer Kemp performed CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing for the child for several continuous minutes. As fire personnel began arriving on scene, Officer Kemp carried the child down to the street to help expedite the rapid treatment and transport of the child to a hospital. He handed the baby over to Los Angeles County Fire Paramedics who continued treatment and were able to regain a pulse during transport to a Long Beach area hospital. The child ultimately recovered from this ordeal. Without a doubt, Officer Kemp's quick response, decisive action, and prompt application of CPR and mouth-to-mouth -mouth played the key role in the survival of the child. His life-saving action is in keeping with the finest traditions to our community by both himself and the Hawthorne Police Department. Here presenting the life-saving award to Officer Sean Kemp is Police Chief Bob Fager.
Chief, don't get comfortable. You're not done. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call up uh, Police Officer Gustavo Rubio from the Hawthorne Police Department. <laughs> officer Gustavo Rubio has been a police officer with the City of Hawthorne for 14 years. During this time, he has worked as a patrol officer, motor officer, and a member of the department SWAT team. On Sunday, February 16, 2014, Officer Rubio was attending a volleyball tournament supporting one of his daughters. He was seated in the stands with other parents and spectators. During a timeout, a mother of one of the children playing collapsed, falling face down on the bleachers. Initially, most people present thought that the woman had passed out due to the high temperature inside of the gym. However, upon further examination, Officer Rubio was able to determine that the woman did not have a pulse and the matter was critically more serious. Officer Rubio, commissioning the woman's husband and another spectator for aid, immediately began to administer CPR. Despite not receiving positive signs while doing so, they continued this life-saving effort until another person arrived with an automated external defibrillator. Officer Rubio, using training he had received on such devices as a police officer, immediately attached the AED to the victim. The AED confirmed initial findings, still no pulse. Officer Rubio administered a shock to the woman via the AED as directed. Almost immediately, the woman's pulse returned. Shortly thereafter, fire department personnel arrived, transporting the woman to a local hospital for treatment. The woman ultimately recovered. This grateful woman later contacted the Hawthorne Police Department to express her gratitude for Officer Rubio life-saving actions. Police administration appreciated such recognition for Officer Rubio's modesty and caused him to never mention this commendable action to anyone prior. Officer Rubio's life-saving action is in keeping with the finest service traditions to our community by both himself and the Hawthorne Police Department. To present the life-saving award, once again, Police Chief Bob Fager. Right now, I'd like to call up Officer Justin Hidalgo and Officer Taylor Klauszowski of the Manhattan Beach Police Department. <laughs> On Thursday, October 9th, 2014, at approximately 8.49 a.m., the Manhattan Beach Fire Department was dispatched to McDonald's, 1203 Artesia Boulevard, regarding a female who had passed out while eating and was not breathing. The daughter was at the restaurant with her mom when she passed out and was on the phone with dispatch telling, her, telling them that her mom was stuck in the booth and was turning gray. The daughter went on to say her mom was cold to the touch and she did not think CPR would work. Within seconds of hearing the call being dispatched to the Manhattan Beach Fire Department, officers Taylor Klazowski and Justin Hidalgo, who were in, a separate car, er, were in separate cars, both recognized the grave nature of the call and both decided to act. They both responded code three, and due to the fact that they were already in the area, they both arrived before the Manhattan Beach Fire Department. Officer Klosowski arrived first and entered the restaurant. When he located the elderly victim, she was still seated upright in a booth. Officer Klosowski physically pulled the victim from the booth onto the ground and began life-saving CPR. The officer advised dispatch over the radio he was conducting CPR and continued to do so until Officer Hidalgo arrived. Although not required to, Officer Hidalgo took it upon himself early in his career to become a certified EMT and to carry first aid supplies such as a bag valve mask with him at all times for just this type of emergency. Officer Hidalgo retrieved the first aid supplies he carries with him on patrol. He then entered the restaurant and immediately located the elderly victim on the ground being tended to by Officer Klosowski. Officer Hidalgo immediately assisted with life-saving CPR rotating between chest compressions and using the bag valve mask he brought with him. The officers did not stop CPR even after the patient vomited on them and continued to do CPR until paramedics arrived on the scene. When the Manhattan Beach Fire Department arrived, they took over the victim's medical care. The paramedics were able to detect a heartbeat, so they transported the victim 
to Little Company of Mary Hospital, where she eventually transferred to the intensive care unit. Here to present the life-saving award to Officer Hidalgo and Officer Klosowski is the Manhattan Beach Police Chief, Eve Irvine. Okay, at this time I would ask that uh, Torrance Fire Engineer Nick Facer and Torrance Fire Captain Kevin Carter please come forward. Just so you know, Kevin Carter, Fire Captain, is he here? He's not. He doesn't think he deserves this, but I think when you hear this story, you'll feel otherwise. He should feel otherwise. Okay, this is a prime example that not everything happens here in the South Bay. These guys are always on duty. While on vacation in Ireland, three Torrance firefighters were preparing for an afternoon of surfing. And I thought she drank and played golf in Ireland. Apparently not. As they made their way down to the water, two persons already in the ocean were noted to be having some sort of difficulties with the worsening weather conditions. It rapidly became apparent that without immediate assistance, the two individuals would be in serious jeopardy of not baking it back to shore. Without any thought of their own peril, Kevin Carter and Nick Fager, Facer entered the water after instructing others on shore to call for help. Upon reaching the first individual, it was apparent that he was totally exhausted and could not remain in the water any longer. It was decided that Kevin would head for shore with this first victim. Kevin and his first victim, after a difficult swim and life-threatening sea, successfully made it to shore. The victim, without a doubt, was completely exhausted, but he was alive. However, Nick's rescue was just beginning. After getting the first victim and Kevin on their way, victim number two was now completely out of sight. Nick, making his best guess, based on his years of surfing experience and dealing with wind and open ocean currents, began to paddle in the direction he believed the second victim had been taken. After approximately a quarter mile of paddling, Nick spotted the surfer helplessly clutching onto a surfboard. Nick continued paddling until finally making contact with the exhausted surfer. The surfer, John Tracy, confided to Nick that he should save himself as he, Tracy, had already given up any hope of surviving this ordeal. However, Nick thought otherwise. With the victim unable to swim under his own power, Nick gave one end of his leash to Mr. Tracy and began the long swim toward shore with Tracy in tow. At some point, a rescue helicopter arrived on scene and witnessed Nick towing the surfer approximately a quarter mile toward a rocky shoreline, undoubtedly saving the man's life. Here to present the Medal of Valor to Fire Engineer Nick Facer is Torrance Fire Chief William Rakowski. And that concludes the awards uh, presentation portion of uh, the program. Again, it is a, a high honor, and uh, just want you guys to know, I got four sons. My youngest is a junior in high school. He told me a couple of weeks ago that uh, after college, he wants to get into law enforcement. I couldn't be prouder.
Could I have all of today's recipients please come up to the front to have a, a group photograph, please? All of today's recipients please come up to the front. Thank you. And I want to put this time on thank all of you for attending this year's event. This concludes it. Please stick around and say hello to our recipients and award them uh, or give them your congratulations. Anyway, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you, Glenn.